Really weird. Onks se toi Helena heritse? Ei se. Joo, ei. Okei. So, uh, you just arrived to Finland a couple yeah. of hours ago. <laughs> Still a bit tired or? Still tired, but very early. <laughs> uh, Westlife, 30 million albums. And your career has also started quite well. Mm, not too bad. <laughs> have you got used to being alone? Um, I think I have. I think it took, it only really took a couple of weeks after I left Westlife, or sorry, it took a couple of weeks of being a solo artist to um, kind of get used to being on my own, not having four other people around me, but I've definitely settled in very fast. How does it feel to be always an ex-Westlife guy? It's fine, you know, and I'll, I'll always be, you know, Westlife will always be a part of my past and it'll always be a part of my future because it, it put me where I am today and I wouldn't be here sitting talking to you if I hadn't been for Westlife and I, I still love all the memories I had and, and loved everything about it. You've told us that this album of yours it tells a lot about it tells a lot about you. Yeah. So it, it's like it's a, well, my whole album lyrically is an autobiography. So kind of each song talks about a different incident in my life, and I wrote every song about about things that happened to me and what I was going through when they happened. I, I talk about alcoholism and growing up in Ireland in the Catholic Church, um, domestic violence, all kinds of things that happened. So you have to be quite open to tell. Yeah, it was really weird because I'm not. You know, obviously my, my, my life is very open in the media at the moment anyway, and um, I just think I wanted to set the record straight and let people understand who I am and, and why I'm the way I am, rather than just judging me from the media, you know. So uh, you didn't want to hidden anything? So. No, I wanted to put all my cards on the table and then people can make the decision on me. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of decision will they make? <laughs> um, whatever they feel is right, whatever people want to make, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just being honest, I'm just being open, so, you know, I can't... I can't do anything to sway people's opinion. I'm just being honest about my life. And if people don't like the way my life was, well, then, you know, they're not going to like me. And they won't like my music. But if they, they accept it and, and respect it, well, then they will like it. I guess you had quite the pressure to, to, to succeed. Um, mm. I didn't, to be honest, I didn't have any pressure because I had so much success in Westlife. Um, you know, the bar was raised so high uh, to go on my own that I was never going to, I was never aiming to be as successful as Westlife. And I still am today because I'm never going to be as successful as Westlife where. So, uh, to be honest with you, anything I do is always going to be less than that, so it, there's no fear of failure. And you, you, have, you have not always been a famous guy. You, you worked in a bingo hall or... I worked in McDonald's. <laughs> I worked everywhere, yeah. I suppose everyone does before they, before they started their final profession. I guess your life changed quite a lot. Yeah, it changed very quick. I think when I started Westlife, we, we were successful within the first six months, so it was a very, very quick change from being you know, a security guard at McDonald's to being a, a, a worldwide famous person. <laughs> was a lot to take in. But nowadays there are, there are many kinds of pop idol contents yeah, and so on. Yeah, it happens quite a lot now. Yeah, so what do you feel? Is it, is it a, how does it feel really to be, to be a fa uh, nobody and after that? Yeah, um, I don't think you ever get a chance to think about it. It just, when it happens, you're, you're in the middle of it and you're you're right in the moment. You don't really get a chance to think back to how things were because it all happened so fast. And, you know, I haven't really had a break to look at what's happened over the last six years at Westlife. So I don't think you ever realise that. You just, people, you know, people say it to you all the time, but it never really sinks into your head what's happened. What would be your advice for all those guys and girls who want to be I, pop stars? I, I really don't know because, you know, I think everyone's got to learn for themselves and, and you've got to make your own mistakes and, and, and you know, you've got to make your own path. And I didn't really learn from anybody else. I, I learned from the mistakes that I made. And I think that's the best advice you can get, is just make mistakes and learn from them. And now you are here for singing for the UNICEF. Well, there we go, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I wouldn't be here if I hadn't made mistakes. You have your own kids? I've got two girls, yeah, yeah, two little girls. So I think things like UNICEF are very important. And that's why I support, I support a lot of kids' charities. And I think when I have my own children, it made me want to get involved. So. I think UNICEF was the perfect excuse for me to come to Finland. No, I'm glad I came now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That is all. Then we need this yeah, this this station now. So like do I say MTV3? MTV3. 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 Okay, cool. Say, I'm Brian McFadden. Okay, cool. Hi, I'm Brian McFadden, and please join me and UNICEF this Saturday on MTV3. Let's help the children of the world. Thanks. That is perfect. Cool.